Mr. Pramod Chaudhary. Uh, I don't think he needs any introduction, but uh, I will definitely introduce him. So I request you, sir, to please come on the guys. He is going to chair the today's session. Uh, I think not only in India but all over the world as far as sugar industry and alcohol industry is concerned, uh, Mr. Pramod Chandragiri is uh, very well known. But just to introduce him, we look into the various aspects of the first generation, second generation, current generation. So today I am going to discuss mostly about bioethanol, biofuels and biorefinery opportunity. Briefly touch on market industry but more focus on emerging technologies. He is a founder and executive chairman of uh, so Raj Industries my presentation is uh, a Pune based company. But uh, as all of you know, it is a Pune based multinational company. You can say that they are visited all over the world. We are and research and development efforts. Not only in first generation, but also in second generation. And, and, and I am very sure that in the future, they are going to so come. What do you see is just one of the biofuels. So, you know, so he is the man behind the whole 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 development, development of Prague in the last. Uh, by 30 years. So, uh, briefly, I just uh, touch upon uh, under his le leadership, the Praj has uh, developed the technology for conversion of uh, uh, we just uh, discussed on cellular the biomass to second generation uh, renewable fuels, biogas, and other chemicals. He is a distinguished alumnus of IIT Bombay. He passed out from 1971 and also from Harvard Business School in 1995. He is a member of various government uh, appointed committees. He is the chairman of uh, CII Task Force on Bioenergy for the year 1920. Is being on the and what are the ways that we can have uh, 
more of uh, you know, gas and yeah, petrol, yeah. diesel, and other advanced fuels. So you mentioned about space, which stands from ship and sea, air, and from two-wheeler onwards. So there, we are importing huge amount of oil. So how we can have, a, you know, a reduce that, uh, and then straight away provide the alternate biofuels. So that is very important in the case of India. So these are the some of the facts, you know, which we have. Uh, Give you. Actually, we are the largest uh, consumer of uh, energy, the third, uh, third largest, and our uh, import production is actually uh, 35 uh, MMT. And uh, other important context is India's carbon CO2 emission is uh, 2.29 billion tons. And if you look at it, it's 20 to 25 percent of course is coming from transportation sector. So if we can, you know, we talked about greenhouse gas emission. And, and then the way the biofuels can mitigate that. So there is a perfect opportunity to you know, reduce this uh, to more than close to 90%. So the use of biomass and bio-based uh, technologies can offer great reduction in the And what are the key drivers of the you know, uh, biofuels are the point by social, point. energy, environment, and economy. And in the context of social, it is very uh, interesting because it creates a very common you know, jobs in the rural areas, particularly in Bagas, rice for we look on other various factors. So there will be a, a huge impetus there. And then also, we have seen in the case of North India and the adjacent regions, how uh, most of can be a problem. So this can be negated. Uh, Completely negated with fuel occupation, the production of fuels, and then of course in the natural way it also boosts the ecosystem. And the in terms of energy, of course, uh, we have a uh, you know, heavy reliance on our fuel generation as a point of So in terms of energy, if you use biofuels, bio, it provides a major plus. And obviously, in terms of the environment, we have seen that global GHG emission, and uh, it's becoming a reality. We have seen that every day there is a global warning climate change. So in fact, the best way to negate that would be to be and obviously in the context of economy, rural economy, and most importantly, we can reduce our huge import bill in terms of so Having said the context, uh, and another thing is, of course, in the, in the context of raising India and doubling the farmers' income, and also in the India also in the Paris Agreement towards uh, GHG reduction, so this provides a perfect setting. The use of biofuels perfects the perfect setting for energy sustainable Now, the obvious question that arises is biofuels can be categorized into various ones. The first generation biofuels and next generation biofuels. This includes uh, liquid, gas, and the advanced fuels. In the context of uh, first generation fuels, we have heard from uh, bioethanol, biodiesel, uh, biogas, and bioethanol also comes in that context. And uh, next generation fuels, in fact, are uh, uh, also looking at is biohydrogen and bio-DME. This is called the drop-in fuels, drop-in diesel. And also renewable petrol and diesels, apart from sustainable aviation fuels and the marine fuels, which BMC mentioned in this presentation. So currently, among all these bioethanol is a front runner, so even from a first generation sugar to a second generation sugar. So, but uh, you know, we have to set the scope for going further toward the technological innovation to next generation fuels. Uh, now it will be, it's a very interesting fact that India being a, you know, a huge country, our production of biofuels is, you know, hardly one percent. So that has to go up now. So the future, the way, you know, if you want to catch up the requirement, it has to be a global impetus towards the production of biofuels and, you know, we are working with the different uh, oil companies and as well as uh, different uh, Refineries, and uh, why there is a, you know, uh, towards the mandating of biofuel, uh, bioethanol, the policy for us actually has been changed in, in the recent times. So we have uh, had the policy which is like 20% blending 
by 2030, and also upward revision, which uh, climate change, the climate change, 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 so if you look at the market perspective, like uh, you know, more than 300 ethanol plants is run by private and property sector, and we have a 2.5 plus billion liters installed base of ethanol plant. And average uh, capacity which is roughly 60 to 100 KLP. And the, the, the interesting part is that our operation is 150 to 170 days a year, which can be starting to go up for second generation We'll have a 300 to 350 days, 300 literally a year run on that. So it will expand the scope of uh, you know, operation of the plants. Well, this currently the major feedstock has been sugar and uh, starchy feedstock. And uh, there is still a scope for uh, using the multiple kind of feedstock like this mentioned is another aspect of the growth of. So second generation has the potential to achieve E20, you know, which is the water One of the aspects has been uh, yeah. you know, we are looked into the different type of uh, feed stocks. Of bio 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 <coughs> so we, uh, in our research, uh, we looked at the sugar, RC, and oil and cellulose uh, feed stock. And uh, you can see that uh, the, the amount of uh, fuels that you can get from uh, one day ethanol, although limited, has a good scope and it can contribute up to 50 percent to 60 percent yield reduction while we discussed it. And cellulose again, you know, has a great offer. It can, uh, it's available in plenty and it can go beyond eat. 10 and the GE 20, and it can contribute more than you know, 70 plus uh, GHD reduction, and uh, of course it negates the effect of food versus fuel that we must produce. Uh, sir, actually I've showed this one, but what we wanted to highlight from this is like how uh, you know, we have changed from uh, first generation and second generation. So first generation as you pointed out has been you know, like uh, this is more or less in the context of carbon neutral to carbon negative technology. Yes, yes, so third generation could be like including, a, you know, algal, which is under development also, you know, from waste to gas and from gas to fuel, which you mentioned in the context of uh, methanol, where it is for the gas fermentation system. The other one is, which is being commercialized, is the second generation. And then, of course, you have a matured one technology and uh, he already mentioned, so our transition is like whatever the achievements we have or technology and know-how from one generation, first generation, we have utilized that and captured that and we have proceeded forward towards the second generation. So uh, in, the, in terms of uh, the technology commercialization for 2G ethanol, so what we have started was just a pilot plan to walk in a decade back and uh, we have matured uh, pre-treatment technology and hydrolysis as well as preservation technology and then uh, we have had the, we set up the uh, demo plant nearby and 12 tons per van and then it is being in operation and based on our uh, you know, technology input as well as demo plan Available. We have been to design and achieve for commercial orders for the H2G ethanol project in India, which PMC Sir has already highlighted. So this is like a transition from a pilot, where pilot scale to commercial sorry, remote scale, where we have tested different type of utilization of the dosing. PMC Sir was mentioning about the key aspects of the ability for sugar industry. So that Again, is all of the area which we have worked on with it and we have all the different patterns on that. We are able to process it to ensure we confidently go ahead with uh, the trials for the uh, uh, US and US and oil companies. So that is in the core shift uh, from one to two to three 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 to
government terminology. So in terms of product, you know, like the low carbon technologies, we're going to say to ethanol, you see that uh, the starch based fuel can go at 40, 45 percent reduction, and the cellulose in biofuels can straight away. What have been that from hydro carbon to carbon But this is based on the ACH, the backbone of in fact, our Prats Infinity technology, which we call it a cellulose second generation technology, and, the and they can reduce the GHG targets. Mentioned here. And use of the second generation. So how bioethanol can contribute towards the bioeconomy, circular bioeconomy. So it has a region where environment, society, and the economy yes, benefits quite substantially. And uh, coming to the low carbon technologies, uh, uh, we mentioned about biojet fuels. So a lot of uh, in line with uh, Kigo, we are partnering with Kigo on taking from uh, sustainable aviation. If you see the growth, there is a, a tremendous growth in the airline industry. So and by in 2050, we want to reduce the CO2 emissions to a substantial number. So that is very, very important because uh, there is been a great change in terms of uh, aviation fuel. And then aviation fuel industry in India has been growing tremendously. So this is also, also a substantial interest in their sustainable aviation fuel is also in the military application where we can reduce the you know, oil import and also provide greater so if you look at this, uh, you know, I just mentioned the specs. So this is the ASTM spec, and in fact, alcohol to jet fuel, which he has mentioned for Virgin Atlantic and Alaska, actually has been tested and performs uh, so, uh, so ethanol to uh, jet fuels needs the specifications of ASTM. And uh, so Praj has been in collaboration with Givo to commercialize uh, uh, this uh, Mr. Pinch uh, has mentioned already in this uh, presentation. So in, in essence, what we have looked at is we have looked at the aviation fuel, and we have also looked at the, 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 the technological aspects of that. And uh, the uh, aviation fuel, match, the specifications of that matches. The another important factor is it is the low sulfur, actually. So that is, apart from a CO2 reduction, there is another factor we talk about sulfur reduction in uh, Sustainable aviation. The current one is like about 3,000, 4,000 feet. So if you go with the biomass of first generation, sugary feed stock to get through it, you will have little or no sulfur. So that gives an amount of edge in some jet fuels and biojet fuels. The other aspect of this is compressed biogas and in fact, uh, 2020, the idea is to replace uh, 40 mm uh, per year CNG, and there is a potential opportunities for more than that. And here we have utilized uh, our specimen and spent wash and bioactive residues. And currently, we are working on directly biomass to CBG. So, this is um, the RD center we are working under the technology development of that. And, Soon we will have a more ideas on that. The other part which uh, the EMC mentioned is really many this is in the context of the combustion, actually biodiesel. So what is special from uh, the from the previous work is you know, we have developed a core enzymatic based process. So usually the traditional one what you see is most of them is offered with a chemical process and then you have effluent to treat and byproducts and the specificity of the loss. So in house we have developed a technology using enzymes which is uh, which offers a greater benefit in terms of specificity. And the interesting part is we have also tested using waste cooking oil and other type of feedstock. So predominantly the using waste cooking oil is getting a big traction. And we I think that we was at the end of our technology climate condition enzymes is which we need to the lot of biomass. And uh, one of the biggest challenges has been uh, 
terms of that is and reliability, scalability, and flexibility, and reliability. In all these aspects, uh, we're looking to when we go for uh, time is really on technology development for commercialization. How we can create Sustainable production in Delhi incorporates all these aspects from the development So this is in case of first generation, we have already established pretty much most of the people that this aspect is followed for a second generation technology and advanced and what we, we are witnessing is actually, if you look at it, what we are expecting is a sugar mill to sugar cane refinery, which is PMC has mentioned about the advanced chemicals, fuels, other aspects of So currently what we are looking at is, uh, we are having a seed ethanol from, uh, from different type of uh, sugar cane. And of course, the bagasse is used for power. And what we envision is actually for what some of these are already working, they've already established technology for that, and some of these are one third of the budget. Basically, we want to cover the aspects which is on the biofuel space, bioenergy space, and of course, renewable uh, production, and also in biochemical. And one aspect which also we're looking at is in the bagasse to. Uh, Lignin based chemicals which we have highlighted, which can go in the aspects of uh, cement construction in the world and also bitumen binder, which will go as a, you know, again, bitumen is also in the core, so that can also be negated through the use of lignin that can come in the So, actually, in essence, what we are trying to do is value maximum switching global project with four products. And some of these are actually on the on the bench and then we have the technology very strong. And in, in essence what we envision is like yeah, similar to a crew of a take a bio crew and we develop the uh, so idea is to go into bio refinery. Mm -hmm. Where we see in terms of fuel, which is gaseous as well as liquid fuels. In addition, we are also looking in the area of the famous liquid value of oil composite form. It is upcoming for large oil. Like capturing the oil components of the biomass and add more value and towards that and increase the oil commercialization as well. And I can tell you probably that. And, uh, the bio refinery pathway, if you look at it, is similar to that of uh, uh, petroleum refinery. Is like you know, in India, we are able to do all the span of uh, products which you see is the spectrum of product which you can come basically from the chemical and biochemical uh, conversion technologies. Like you get a different line of products. So this is coming from one G. 2G and of course the delicious things which is mentioned is in the utilization of gas fermentation. So, so the all these background aspects we are looking at and we have to, uh, some of these we are already covered and some of this we are in one minute experience to share in my observation. So, the larger the project and also what he has mentioned already to also to buy and to contribute to this. So space. what we envision in the future is so more this, towards, uh, you know, there will be a less uh, demand towards the fossil fuel and then the demand so towards the alternate energy of the significant possibilities of the So I can look at the subject mobility as already mentioned. Focus on any Q&A questions. Drivers and most of our technology which are developing and I uh, think somebody, what yes, we are seeing is biofuels as the biochemical as well, and uh, biorefinery as the great potential to address uh, social and economical and environmental issues. And uh, what we look forward is the speedy commercialization of emerging technology. <laughs> Um, so we'll and the and the most important point is the uh, reliability and viability of the important uh, uh,
approximate 1.5 million, and therefore it's an issue of scale. What I want to ask you is how effective or cost effective is your technology to be successful in India in the foreseeable future? A very good question. I think it was fairly logical. I respect your observation. That's precisely what has happened that at least four companies out of USA who straightway went for a full scale plant and one in Europe, they went very up or they went underwater. Whereas uh, we have learned from two things. One is our own experience of scaling up of 1G. We started 1G, typical model of size was 30,000 liters per day. We talk about liters, not gallons here. And we have gone for a project of 1.2 million liters per day in the country in UK. That was so you can see the level of scaling up which we have dirtied our hands for over a period of time. We feel that experience is very valuable to deploy for this operation, for this technology. The second part of this technology, the core is the pre-treatment. How do you process the biomass and how do you extract the sugar <coughs> after hydrolysis and lignin? And there I can say that this technology which is now running for us four years have been established and as well as due diligence by largest oil company from USA become very important. Already is a, there is a private uh, report by them, so I can't share it for me, but uh, there was very, very thorough exercise. And that has not only given a confidence to them, but also to many other people who are visiting it. Over a period of time, we have deployed a lot of measures to bring down the office and capex down. That is the third part of it. That how do you optimize the office and capex? I think it is a reduction of almost 50% reduction has happened. Both. The another good part of the Indian project is that in the first round, first batch, they declared 12 projects, out of which they finalized six out of which we got four. The government of India has supported with violating a funding. It was one of the major initiative by government of India to offer violating a funding for these projects. Without that, I'm sure I agree with you, they would not have become viable, but now with this violating a funding and a further reduction. Now we are talking about the numbers which are very close to a grain plant. The cost of a grain plant where I am talking about the Bagaz based project. But in the next three to four months, we'll launch our Bagaz based model, which is more relevant to India, and also a Boltown model. And I'm sure that will perhaps uh, establish the point what I'm trying to say. So give me a time, when you come to the next international conference, we'll have project up and running. Thank you. I visited your plant 15 days back. As most of us there, it is 200, uh, 12,000 liters per day. That plant is already visited. Uh, different types of you are using all these things. That I am very good. Only thing is how economically that you are saying you have to come up with this to work. We are going to this thing. The thing is that is what type of because enzyme is the most important thing conversion. That is the mean. That is to be available in. India. That is to be required or to be done. Because I have seen this thing and I have asked the question to your all the people there and it is there. Okay, this is my observation there when I visited your plant, sir. Question I assume that is about enzyme. So uh, the enzyme development in India, it is uh, happening on two counts. One is the uh, enzyme made locally. So we are having uh, no enzyme enzyme. And they have been adopted over and over with running our R&D and all that, and they come 
it is better and better evidence. The alternative is that uh, there are some Indian forces also developed, which are being lifted at uh, different places. There is also OSM, on-site manufacturing of enzymes. That model also is now available. In <coughs> what happens at OSM, that you don't go for too much of purification on that. They can be produced and directly used. So there are a number of efforts are going on. And as I said, the consumption of enzymes has come down dramatically. So it is coming under control. I can't use the numbers of time, but I think the current prices of ethanol from cane juice is it 15 rupees? Government has given So I think in that price, this will become viable just now. So when we are ready after the Bagas model, I'm sure, and we are also trying to say that if they can make some more concession to start it initially. Yes. Uh, I have one small question. Uh, you have talked about the SAF, uh, the Sustainable Aviation Fuels. Yes, sir. Is it in a R&D or is it a commer uh, commercialized? If it is commercialized, it's where it is? Uh, it is with the collaboration with a company called Jivo from USA. Uh, they are already commercially, in fact, uh, there are a lot of reports. They recently signed a contract with Alaska Airlines for a regular supply. So from there, it is definitely commercialized. India, we can say it is under development, we have brought the samples from them, which are given to them for testing. And finally, we know the, the process has been, and the technology has been transferred to us. That we are talking to oil companies, and it's a, the sugar company or a sugar producer. So this, what we done, they done it from the grain, corn. But there's a main topic, corn, corn sugars. Whereas we are now adopting it to molasses. Because molasses sugars are the cheapest source of sugars in the world. So we are trying to adopt it too. So from molasses we have to do this. Yes. We have to do the some R and D part no, in the We have already tested, we've done yes. that yes. part. Yeah, now we have to put up we are talking to oil because ultimately the supply has to happen from oil company. You know at the airport we feel the, the current aviation fuel is supplied by oil company. Yeah. Is there, uh, <coughs> so I hope uh, that will be also become uh, commercialized uh, in maybe a year or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D.K. Goyal from STA. I want to know what are the input requirements in terms of energy and water, <coughs> both uh, steam and uh, electrical. For the second energy? Yes. And the output uh, in terms of the effort and... Uh, I think, uh, I think when you become the I won't know out of my memory, so my people are here. Yeah, it's take it card and then... We will take this uh, point with you and we will give you because this vary from the raw material composition to raw material composition. Yeah, yeah but there is a bagasse, there is a rice straw, there is a wheat straw, there is a wood stocks. So we have all different different combinations. So, but you can give a uh, similar yeah. 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 I think it will be nice if you can. See, this is, in, I will send it to you. It is in comparison, it is today it is equivalent of a grain alcohol plant, the consumption patterns. Effluent is also is equal because we are recycling the most of the effluent also. So we are making the water balance in such a way that the overall parameter should match to the grain alcohol requirement to start with. Overall parameter will match to the molasses. Idea is that, but currently you think it's in the current parameter. Yeah, we'll send it. The CDG or anything. So those are the SOI Professor Bunja, uh, I have a question uh, regarding carbon footprint. How you compare uh, first generation with second generation? See, in the LCA, life cycle analysis, we do it uh, regularly. And uh, we are not in India much. And I'm going to say that it should be good in the first for for there it is more than compulsory way to supply them. So today we have cane juice, for example, cane juice, is 0.7 to 
So like that, there are just very common. Is it possible to integrate the two in the pre-existing system? It can be, but wheat processing will require a different kind of a uh, wheat processing because molasses is already there from the cane. With the mills, we are using the mills for getting the cane crush. There they use mostly diffusers. So actually, we will develop for a once upon time a diffuser which can take care of both. That is possible, but then mills will be of no use. The second part is that in wheat you don't get baguettes. So your energy equation goes a little different. That's the, the cost you have to take borrow energy from outside. So you can't like, generate energy out of the but wheat pulp can get that kotha which is regulator, can get some catalytic value. So like that uh, you have to see balance it out. But I think the carbon footprints will be a little poor carbon footprints than the sugar can. Only attraction is that, like sugar, your uh, load, I mean, coal is around 14%, 15%. There it is, 18 to 20%. Is it possible that the yield being higher is there? Yeah. What we have uh, uh, wondering is that when we're trying to extend the season of the sugar cane. The thing you've done is Pakistan. We put up a separate uh, diffuser and yeah, move that exactly. state to ethanol. You see that incremental crushing versus incremental value. Yeah. That we are to, I mean, you people know it better, I think economics is the most efficient in calculations. So this is the, you can extend how many days, two months, three months, depends. That's one thing. Second was initially when we had done some cultivation with the cost in data, initially we said a lot of work time. So, that's all the problem was that. They would come and 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 they would come. I don't know if that problem is handled or not. But these are some of the practical things which happened within that whole moment. The red deep fruits are there, sugar bits are there. We take some time later. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we are, uh, that sweet sorghum, we always feel sweet sorghum is a better crop than sugar bits. I mean, I wonder if people are going to get up and some of them, they always compare it with the fodder. I think with fodder you get baguettes. A lot of things we get in sugar bits and sweet sorghum. We get two and a half to ten cycles in a year. We see that is the better. And Gujarat, uh, they are also not trying cassava. That's the other. Hmm, balancing color effort. Okay, thank you very much, and I think I will. Uh, the colleagues on the diet. So I request Sashi uh, again on the same company. Sorry. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity and uh, thank you, PFC, sir, for that wonderful uh, session. Actually, uh, I'm glad that he also covered part of the, the work, which, uh, you know, which slides which I have prepared, and he has set the background very nicely. So some slides might be repetitive, but I hope that uh, I'll skip through and then focus more on the technological side. So I work at the Research and Development Center of Raj, uh, which is at Raude, Renault, and uh, we look into the you know, various aspects covering first generation, second generation, and current generation. So today I'm going to discuss mostly about bioethanol, biofuels, and biorefinery opportunity. Briefly touch on market industry, but more focus on emerging technologies like you know, 1G and 2G. And uh, so through through my presentation, I will uh, you will see the highlights of. Uh, in all these areas like bioethanol, biofuels, and biorefinery products. And this has emerged because of uh, the uh, research and development efforts, and engineering efforts, and also the business side efforts. And uh, in fact, uh, we have, with that, provided a perfect platform. So what you see is just not only the realization of all these, uh, you know, projects and uh, products, but also we are taking it close to commercialization as we are from the into service planning. So, uh, briefly, I'll just touch upon a very brief mention about Praj. Of course, you have heard uh, from our founder himself. And uh, we just discussed on the energy scenario in India, just in the context of social, uh, economical, and uh, uh, 
uh, environmental issues, how this is important and also in the context of uh, uh, import of uh, uh, fuels and how you know bioethanol and biofuels can you know add value there. And uh, uh, briefly, a touch on biofuels, mainly you know liquid and gaseous fuels and advanced fuels, which uh, you know which is very much in relevance in the context of uh, aviation fuels and other uh, advanced biofuels. And very briefly, we'll be you know, I'll be touching upon low carbon to carbon negative technologies, like how we can shift and how. You know, Praj technology has been involved in that, and how uh, you know, uh, sugar industry and other uh, you know, uh, ethanol industry can you know, benefit from this. And uh, finally, on the industry transformation, I a brief summary of this. And uh, as we are located, our headquarters is in Pune, but uh, as uh, pointed out by Dr. Padil, that you know we are a multinational Indian company. We have uh, uh, you know presence across. There are 75 countries and over different continents of the world. And uh, we are, uh, in fact, a uh, pioneer in bioethanol production process. Started as a humble beginning, and now we are in the space of bioenergy, biochemicals, and advanced biofuels, and also wastewater treatment and technology. I come from, uh, I come from a research and development section, so where we, have a, you know, where we are responsible for new technology and new developments. And, and, uh, and we also have a uh, you know, presence of more than you know, uh, uh, 25 plus patents and also more than patents coming up in the recent years towards the second generation cellular so we'll all plant. And this is uh, the strong credentials which we have across the globe and uh, uh, our chairman already have uh, uh, mentioned about both the uh, different type of plants and how we are offering value there. Uh, as per the, you know, if you look at the Indian energy scenario, what we are seeing is uh, there is, as per IAA, International Energy uh, Association, India is importing 90% uh, of its consumption by 2040. And current is like, uh, if you look at it, it's around, uh, uh, say, 226, so we can go up to five times. So there is a huge requirement, uh, you know, like for the alternate fuels because there is a huge import. Ninety percent of eighty-five percent of oil is imported, and uh, because of the various global, you know, geopolitical scenario changes, and uh, there is a huge requirement in India actually to look for alternate fuels. So this provides a perfect setting why you know there is a requirement for alternate biofuels. And not only that, uh, there is a huge increase in the lifestyle, uh, you know, lifestyle as well as uh, you know, transportation has been on the increase. And what are the ways that we can have uh, more of uh, you know, gasoline, petrol, diesel, and other advanced fuels? So you mentioned about space which spans from ship, sea, air, and from two-wheeler onwards. So there, we are importing huge amount of oil. So how we can have, uh, you know, uh, reduce that uh, and then straight away provide with the alternate biofuel. So that is the setting for the, in the case of India. So these are the, some of the facts, you know, which we have, uh, uh, you know, wanted to give you. Actually, we are the largest uh, consumer of uh, energy, third, uh, third largest, and uh, our in crude import production is actually uh, 35 uh, MMT. And uh, other important context is India's carbon CO2 emission is uh, 2.29 billion ton. And if you look at it, it's 20 to 25 percent, of course, is uh, coming from transportation sector. So if we can, you know, if we talked about greenhouse gas emission, you know, and then the way the biofuels can mitigate that. So there is a perfect opportunity to, you know, reduce this uh, to more than close to 90 percent. So the use of biomass and bio-based uh, technologies can offer great reduction in that respect. And what are the key drivers if you look at the, uh, the biofuels are like uh, social, energy, environment, and economy. And in the context of social, it is very uh, interesting because it creates uh, uh, you know, jobs in the rural areas, you know, particularly in the people you know, bagas, rice, straw, wheat, corn, other various factors. So there will be a, you know, a huge impetus there. And then also, we have seen in the case of North India, Haryana, and other adjacent regions how uh, the burning of uh, a straw can be a problem. So this can be negated uh, 
completely negated to the uh, towards the production of fuels. And then, of course, in a natural way, also towards the ecosystem and the development. In terms of energy, of course, uh, we have a uh, you know, heavy reliance on imports, as I pointed out, 80, 90 percent. So, in terms of energy, if you use biofuels, you know, it provides a greater trust there. And obviously, in terms of uh, environment, we have seen a you know, global GHG emission, and uh, it's becoming a reality. We have seen that every day there is a global warning, uh, climate change. So, in fact, the best way to negate that will be through the uh, use of uh, biomass and biofuels. And uh, obviously, in the context of economy, you know, it accelerates in the rural economy, and most importantly, it can reduce our huge uh, uh, import bill in terms of oil. So having set the context, uh, and another thing is, of course, in the, in the context of making India and doubling the farmers' income, and also with uh, India being a, you know, in the Paris Agreement towards uh, GHG reduction, so this provides a perfect setting. The use of biofuels perfect, the perfect setting for energy security in terms of India. Now, the obvious question that arises is biofuels can be you know, categorized into various one. The first generation biofuels and next generation biofuels. This includes uh, liquid, gas, and the advanced fuels. In the context of uh, first generation fuels, we heard from you know, bioethanol, biodiesel, uh, biogas, and bioethanol also comes in that context. And uh, next generation fuels, in fact, uh, which we uh, R and D is also looking at, is biohydrogen and biodeme. This is called the drop-in. Fuels, dropping diesels, and also renewable petrol and diesels, apart from uh, sustainable aviation fuels and the marine fuels, which uh, Mr. PMC mentioned in his presentation. So, among in currently among all this, bioethanol is a front runner, say either from a first generation sec uh, sugars or second generation sugars. So, but uh, you know, uh, we have uh, set the scope for going further to our technological innovation to next generation. Well. Uh, now it will be. It's a very interesting fact that India, being a you know a huge country, our production of biofuels is you know hardly in one percent. So that has to go up. So in the future, the way you know if you want to, you know, to catch up with the requirement, there has to be a, you know, further impetus towards the production of biofuels. And uh, you know we are working with uh, you know, different. Uh, uh, oil companies and as well as you know, different uh, refineries to get the uh, biofuels in the production. And uh, why there is a, you know, uh, towards the mandating uh, biofuel, uh, bioethanol, the policy perspective has been changed in, in the recent times. So we have uh, had the policy which is like 20% blending by 2030 and also upward revision which uh, Mr. PMG also mentioned about heavy molasses and partial sugar cane juice and 100% uh, sugar cane juice we discussed in the QA section. And there is also, you know, impetus from the government side uh, uh, towards a CPG plant. So there is a huge amount of uh, scope for economics as well as, uh, uh, <coughs> as well as jobs in the rural sector. So if you look at the market perspective, like, uh, you know, uh, more than 300 ethanol plants are you know, run by private and corporate sector, and we have a 2.5 plus billion liters installed base of ethanol production. And the average uh, capacity, which uh, is roughly 60 to 100 kLp. And the, the, the interesting part is the, the operation is 150 to 170 days a year, which can be, you know, if you go up for second generation, we will have a 300 to 350 days, 300 literally a year run on that. So it will expand the scope of uh, you know, operation of the plants. And currently the major feedstock has been sugar and uh, starchy feedstock. And uh, there is still a scope for uh, you know, using the multiple kind of feedstock like which he mentioned is another aspect of the growth of. So second generation has the potential to achieve E20, you know, which is the uh, policy mandate which has been given by the government and more. And uh, the, one of the aspects has been, uh, you know, we have looked into the different type of uh, feedstocks for biofuels and biorefineries. <coughs> so we, uh, in our research, uh, we looked at the sugar, starchy, and oily and cellulosic uh, feedstock. And uh, you can see that uh, the, the amount of uh, fuels that you can get from uh, 
1G ethanol, although limited, has a good scope and it can contribute up to 50% to 60% GHG reduction while we discussed in QA. And cellulose, you know, has a great offer. It can, uh, it's available in plenty and it can go beyond E10 and including E20 and it can contribute more than, you know, 70 plus uh, GHG reduction and uh, of course it negates the effect of food versus fuel debate. Uh, MC Sir, actually, I've showed this one, but what we wanted to highlight from this is like how uh, you know we have changed from uh, first generation and second generation. So first generation actually pointed out as being, you know, like uh, this is more or less in the context of carbon neutral to carbon negative technologies. So third generation could be like including, uh, you know, algal, which is under development, also you know from waste to gas and from gas to fuel, which you mentioned in the context of uh, methanol, where it is for the, the gas fermentation system. And the other one is, which is being commercialized, is the second generation. And then, of course, you have a matured 1G technology. Uh, and uh, he already mentioned, so our transition is like, whatever the achievements we had or technology and know-how from one generation, first generation, we have utilized that and captured that and we have proceeded forward towards the second generation cellulose ethanol. So, uh, in, the, in, in terms of uh, the technology commercialization for 2G ethanol, so what we have started was just a pilot plant work in, uh, a decade back, and uh, we have matured uh, pre-treatment technology and hydrolysis, as well as fermentation technology, and then uh, we have had the, we set up the, uh, a demo plant nearby and 12 tons per done and then it has been in operation and based on our uh, you know technology input as well as demo plant uh, uh, we have been able to you know achieve four uh, number of commercial orders for the 2D ethanol projects in India which uh, PMC sir has already highlighted. So this is like a transition from a, a pilot uh, where pilot scale to commercial, uh, sorry, uh, to demo scale, where we have, you know, tested different type of pre-treatment technology. So, PMC Sir was mentioning about the key aspect is how we develop pre-treatment and enzymatic hydrolysis. So that is the one of the area which we have worked on, and we have built uh, different type of patterns on that, along with our process engineering. <coughs> so we were able to you know, confidently go ahead with uh, the trials for our uh, US-based oil company, which he has mentioned. So that has been the, the core shift, uh, if you look at from 1G to 2G, the pre-treatment and enzymatic hydrolysis, which we were able to get a good handle on that, including the feedstock and the chemical aspects of that. So in terms of, uh, you know, like the low carbon technologies, uh, lignocellulose to ethanol, you see that uh, the starch-based fuel can provide up to 40, 45% reduction, and the cellulosic biofuels can straight away take to 95, 85 to 95. This is based on the LCA which uh, we conducted. So, in fact, our Prats Infinity technology, which we call it for cellulosic second generation technology, and they can reduce the GHT targets. So this is uh, about the how bioethanol can contribute towards the uh, bioeconomy, circular bioeconomy. So, so it has a regions where environment, society, and economy uh, benefits uh, quite substantially. And uh, coming to the low carbon technologies, it's uh, uh, PMC mentioned about biojet fuels. <coughs> so, what uh, in line with uh, Kivo, uh, we are partnering with Kivo on taking from isobutanol to sustainable aviation fuels. So if you see the growth, there is a a tremendous growth in the airline industry. So, and by in 2050, we want to reduce the you know, CO2 emissions to a substantial percent. So that is very, very important because uh, th there has been a, a great change in terms of uh, aviation fuel, and then the aviation fuel industry in India has been growing tremendously. So this is also also a substantial interest in the sustainable aviation fuel is also in the military application where we can reduce the you know, oil import and also provide greater energy.
So if you look at this, uh, you know, I just mentioned the specs. So this is the ASTM specs, and in fact, alcohol to jet fuel, which he has mentioned for the Virgin Atlantic and uh, Alaska, actually has been tested, and it falls uh, so on. So ethanol to uh, jet fuels meets the specifications of ASTM. And uh, so Praj has been in collaboration with Givo to commercialize uh, uh, this area, uh, which Mr. Peems sir has mentioned already in his uh, presentation. So in, in essence, what we have looked at is we have looked at the aviation fuel, and we have also looked at the, 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 uh, the technological aspects of that. And uh, the uh, aviation fuel, the specifications of that matches. The another important factor is it is the low sulfur, actually. So that is, apart from a CO2 reduction, there is another factor is uh, sulfur reduction in uh, sustainable aviation fuels. The current one is like about 3,000, 4,000 ppm. So if you go with the biomass or biograph, say first generation sugary feed stock to jet fuels, you will have little or no sulfur. So that gives an another edge in terms of uh, jet fuels, that is biojet fuels. Uh, the other aspect of this is a, a compressed biogas, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, 2020, the idea is to replace uh, 40 mm uh, per year CNG, and there is a potential opportunities for more than. And here we have utilized uh, our PressMed and SpendWash and bioactive residues, and currently we are working on directly biomass to CBG. So this is. Uh, but at the R&D center, we are working under the technology development of that, and uh, you know, soon we will have a, a more uh, a, a <coughs> more ideas on that front uh, towards the commercialization front. The other part, which uh, uh, Mr. EMC mentioned, is about the, the, the this is in the context of uh, first gen, actually biodiesel. So what is special from uh, the from the previous work is you know we have developed a core enzymatic based process. So usually in the traditional one, what you see is most of them is offered with a chemical process, and then you have effluent to treat and uh, the other uh, uh, byproducts and the specificity is lost. So in house we have developed a technology using enzymes, which is uh, which offers a greater benefit in terms of specificity as well. And the interesting part is we have also tested using waste cooking oil and other type of feedstock. So predominantly, the using waste cooking oil is getting a big traction. And I think uh, towards the end, our technology using uh, enzymes is playing a critical role there. And uh, one of the biggest challenge has been, uh, uh, in, in terms of that, is the reliability and the scalability and flexibility and viability. All these aspects uh, we look into when we go for, uh, say, from technology development to commercialization. And uh, like uh, in the Christian and Answer session, which was, which was mentioned, that sustainable production is the key to success. So, so Praj incorporates all these uh, you know, aspects when you develop a technology and go for commercialization. So this is in case of first generation, we have already established pretty much a lot of factor. And this aspect is followed for a, a second generation technology and advanced viral refinement. And what we, we are witnessing is actually, uh, if you look at it, what we are expecting is a sugar mill to sugar cane refinery, which your EMC in his note has mentioned about the advanced chemicals, fuels, other aspects uh, from uh, cellulose to stock. So currently, what we are looking at is. Uh, we are having a C ethanol from uh, you know from different type of uh, sugar feed, and of course the bagasse is used for power. And what we envision is actually for what some of these are already working. We are already established technology for that, and some of these are in the pipeline. Basically, we want to cover the aspects which is on the biofuel space, bioenergy space, and of course uh, co-production, and also in the biochemical area. And one aspect which also we are looking at is you know, bagasse to uh, you know, lignin based chemicals which he has highlighted, which can go in the aspects of uh, cement construction in the road and also bitumen binder which will go as a, you know, again bitumen is also a huge import, so that can also be negated through the use of lignin that can come from bagasse as well. 
So actually, in essence, what we are trying to do is value maximization through multiple core products. And some of these are actually on the on the bench, and then we have the technology for that. And in, in essence, what we envision is like similar to a crude oil energy. Uh, let's take a bio crude, and then we develop the uh, the idea is to create the bio refinery. So where we see is uh, you know in terms of fuel, which is gaseous as well as uh, uh, you know, liquid fuels. In addition, we are also looking in the area of uh, you know, lignin value addition, which is a, you know, which is upcoming one. So we are you know, right now going beyond the fuels and chemicals towards the, like capturing the all components of the biomass and add more value and towards that uh, you know, increasing the commercialization fund as well. And uh, uh, the bio refinery pathway, if you look at it, is similar to that of uh, Petroleum refinery is like you know, you you, you the span of uh, products which you see is the spectrum of product which you can come basically from the chemical and biochemical uh, conversion technology is like you get a different line of products. So this is coming from 1G, 2G, and of course on the gaseous feedstock which is uh, which is mentioned is you know utilization of gas fermentation technology as well. So all these aspects we are looking at and we want to you know we. Some of these we are already covered, and some of this we are looking and working vigorously on that front. So, uh, he may, uh, as PMC has mentioned already about the fossil to biomobility. So, what we envision in the future is more towards, you know, there will be a less uh, demand towards the fossil fuel, and then the demand towards the alternate energy sources will significantly increase. So bio mobility, bio mobility and e mobility, as I already mentioned, the concept will be the key drivers. And most of our technology which we are developing, you know, has been towards the utilization of alternate energy sources. And uh, in summary, what we have seen is biofuels as the biochemical as well, and uh, bio refinery has the great potential to address uh, social and economical and environmental issues, and uh, what uh, we look forward is the speedy commercialization of emerging technologies and of course uh, as PMC mentioned about the viability cap funding and also the support from the government and other uh, private sectors. And uh, the most important point is the uh, uh, reliability and viability of the important pillars of uh, sustainable biofuel And this has been uh, one of the greatest learning for us and from our 1G and then we want to translate to our second G and that. This I'd like to thank you.